Welcome back everybody. In this video we are going to be recursively building a tree. So let's start by looking at our input and our output. On the left here we have our output. It's going to be a tree based on objects where every node is an object and each node is a location from the input places array. So you'll see that each value in the places array is also an array and it goes in the form of country, then uh, province or state, and then city. These are just some places I've been so please don't be offended if you're not from North America and feel like I'm excluding you. <laughs> it's not intentional, I just haven't been very many places. So our output array is just going to remove any duplicates so that if even though Ontario exists in the input multiple times, only one Ontario node exists in our output. Fairly straightforward. Feel free to pause the video if you really want to take a look at it or grab the code from the gist in the description box below and follow along. So let's close that and let's get to writing our recursive function. Uh, it's going to be called build tree and I'm assigning it to result and then just passing results JSON stringified so it looks all pretty and easy to read into output.json. So if you run this with node, it'll give you the output and you can see it for yourself. And that should be about all you need to know. Down here is just the skeleton of our build tree and build branch functions. So we're passing in the places array and assigning it to the scoped value, value of R, A-R-R, and we need to take this entire list and convert it into a single tree. So that's going to be a reduction. So let's call reduce. And obviously our reduce function is going to be build branch. And we need to seed this reduction with some sort of value. We need to seed our tree, which sounds kind of sounds kind of goofy, but that's what we need to do. And any node in a tree could be seen as the root node of a new tree. So all we need to do to seed our tree is just provide a empty node, which will be, in this case, an object. So that's very straightforward, very easy. Reduce is automatically going to pass in the value uh, of each uh, element in the places array and the accumulator. So first it passes in the accumulator, which starts as our empty object. That's going to be our branch. And then the value is the locations array. So one at a time, it'll pass in, say, Canada, Ontario, Toronto, and then Canada, Ontario, London. And keep going through this list one at a time. Each of those will either follow or build a branch accordingly, and then return the entire tree from here. So let's get started. The first condition that we have to handle is our base case. And our base case is going to be if we have reached the end of a particular element in the array. So if we're up on line 9 and we've we've added Sarnia as a node already and we just need to add or we need to say we've, we're done, we don't need to do anything more, we just need to return a new node. So we need to check that somehow. So the easiest way to check that is just by checking if location, the first element in the array, uh, is undefined. So if it's triple equals to undefined, we can return a new node, and our new node is just going to be an empty array, or an empty object, sorry. So new node is an empty object. That's our entire base case, that's all we need to worry about. The real logic comes down here, where we need to either follow a matching branch so if we are in, uh, let's say, line 9 again, and so it's our third pass through of Canada, Ontario, we need to follow Canada, so we don't create another Canada node, follow Ontario, because it already exists and we don't need another Ontario node, and then add Sarnia, and then add the empty Sarnia node. So we'll be returning an object, and it's going to be appending to our branch, whatever was passed in on line 22, whatever is passed in as branch, it's going to append to the current node that we're on, uh, so the location that we're on, uh, the rest of that branch, whether it's following or whether it is creating new branches as it goes. So we will use object.assign, 
because that will create a new object and return it. And we'll assign to branch a new node, which will have the location value. And again, this will either be replacing an existing location value or adding a new location value if one doesn't already exist. But it really depends on something that's coming up uh, later. And so this will be, the value that will be assigned to this node is the return value of build branch. So this is where our recursive call is set up. And we need to give it a parent node, so a, a root node, to say this is where you're going to start for your new branch. So this is what we're going to pass in as our new branch uh, in each call. Uh, so this will be parent node and then the rest. So again, this here, if you look at your arguments up on line 22, parent node is going to become branch and rest is going to become, the first element of the rest of the array is going to become the location, the current location that we're looking at. So if we first were looking at city, then rest is going, or sorry, if we were first looking at country, rest will have the first element be a province or a state, and so location, the second pass through, will be a province or a state. And then third pass through, it'll be a city. And each time, we'll assign a new parent node based on whether that node already existed and we're following it, or if we're creating a new node. So now we just need to create this parent node. In order to do that, we need to know if there is already a matching node or if we have to create a new one. So we'll create a variable. It'll be a Boolean called has matching node. And because we're gonna make some assumptions about our input values, meaning that they'll always take the form of country, city, or sorry, country, state, province, or city, uh, we don't need to do any traversals, any diving through our tree, we're just going to check laterally across uh, and see if, for example, we're looking at a city, we're only going to look at other cities at that level. So we can do that pretty simply by taking, by using the method keys on object and pass in our branch. And so that'll give us all of the current either countries, cities, or, or states, provinces, that at our current level. And that will give us an array, which means we can call index of. And index of will either return the index of the location, if it already exists in the tree, or it will return negative 1, if it doesn't already exist. And so if we, if, we want that there, if we want the value to be has matching node, we can just return true by saying it does not equal negative 1. And so now we can assign parent node, which is what we've been trying to work towards. And so parent node is going to be the new value we pass in for branch every single time. So if we have a matching node, then our parent node is just going to be the node that we want to follow, so the matching node. Otherwise, it will be a new node because we need to create a new branch and follow that new branch. And that's it. That's assuming I haven't messed anything up here. That will build our tree for us. So let's run this. All right, no errors. That's good. And let's check out our output. And that looks right to me. Let's compare it. Looks good. So it does exactly what we wanted it to do, which is create our nested location structure based on our input array. So again, I have the code in the description box below. Play around with it if you want. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments down below. If you like the video, like the video. If you have any suggestions for things you really want me to cover, or if you think I did a particularly bad job explaining something in this video, that's good to know as well. One small thing I will provide you with as a little refactor that everyone who has seen my videos before is probably expecting is we have an if with a return value and an else with a return value and there's nothing else in there which means that I'm of course going to change it to be using a ternary which 
just to get rid of all this extra noisy syntax. And that's that. One small thing I do, I have started to play with. I haven't really decided if it's a thing yet uh, because I know a lot of people probably don't like it, is declaring all of my constants at the top of a function and separating them with comma first notation. My, obviously my linter doesn't enjoy this either because I'm using standard JS, which is I think fairly common. Even MPJ on fun fun function, he mentioned that in his last video that he was using standard, uh, which was kind of cool because I didn't know that. But uh, the reason I started playing around with this syntax is because it reminds me of Haskell's or Elms, if you've used Elms, let and in syntax where you say let and then you assign all of your local values and then in and then you actually do your return logic. So anyway, it's just something I'm playing with. Haven't made a decision on it yet since it's bouncing around in my head. Uh, and if you have any opinions on whether you think this is particularly good or bad, let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.